In the world of virtual reality, putting on a pair of goggles transports users to anywhere on Earth and beyond, all without leaving home. Users become immersed in a digital landscape that would normally be beyond their reach. VR has come a long way in the past decade, and developers are constantly working on new ways to enhance VR user experiences. Gone are heavy headsets and chunky, sluggish graphics. Now, step inside a fully immersive VR chamber that has about 100 times the resolution of traditional virtual reality. Inside Science. So what's unique about it is the fact that we've taken 32 of the highest resolution OLED panels that are currently available and configured them in a way to allow you to create a fully immersive chamber so you are covered with computer graphics and wherever you look around, everything appears to actually be floating around with you. The difference is, compared to commercial VR currently, this system has about 100 times the resolution. Here at the University of Hawaii in Manoa, they have what's called a cyber canoe. No, it's not a virtual boat. It uses ultra-high resolution screens that are seamless light-emitting diode displays, LED screens. The result is a visual experience that overcomes the limitations of current VR environments. So CyberCanoe stands for Cyber Enabled Collaboration Analysis, Navigation and Observation Environment. It's a uh, hybrid reality visualization environment allowing you to look at large-scale data in resolutions that we couldn't achieve previously. So data visualization is the process of turning data into images so that people can understand what's actually hidden inside the data. The display chamber hosts 32 LED screens with almost 283 megapixels of resolution. For perspective, a high-definition monitor is about 2 megapixels. Students working in Jason Lee's lab put the whole thing together. I told Jason, you know, I want to make a really big LED wall and he gave me that chance and now here it is. It's a very big LED screen and it's the highest resolution in the world too. The unique system can take massive amounts of data and turn it all into 3D images. Scientists can add new data to images to see changes and make comparisons from past pictures in things like a coral reef and earthquakes. Here labeled on the screen are all the earthquakes that are magnitude 8 or have over 100,000 deaths. One of the applications that we're working on is with scientists from the Hawaii Institute of Marine Biology. They go out to coral reefs and they take lots of images of the coral reefs and then reconstruct it in 3D. By doing so, they're able to use the three-dimensional models to measure them to see how they grow over time. Another use of the system is to visualize really tough concepts, like chaos theory. It's a branch of math that helps explain why it's impossible to predict the weather a year in advance. This maze of twirling 3D cubes represents a strange attractor, a part of chaos theory. The theory is that points that are near each other on the attractor at one time can be far apart at a later time, making the system unpredictable. Visualizing data in this way could be revolutionary for scientists to see patterns in graphics they haven't seen before, and it gives them the ability to interact and be immersive in their own research. The end goal of all this is to provide a capability so that scientists who do have a lot of information, a lot of data, engineers, and even artists who are limited by their current capability for looking at information, to bring it in here and begin to experiment with this new medium to see what can they see in their data. Now they're sort of liberated in this kind of space. This is Inside Science. Inside Science. If you enjoyed this edition, follow us on the web and social media. Powered by the American Institute of Physics and a coalition of underwriters.